Ever have to make the walk of shame? It's not pretty. In fact, these things are red to match the color of your face. But even if it is embarrassing to carry the can, it makes it pretty darn easy to get out of trouble. These things happen, but if you're in a Tesla and you get to 0% state of charge, the walk of shame just isn't an option. In fact, your two options are to call a flatbed to come and get you, or find a way to bring the charging to you. In bad weather, on a deserted road. That got us thinking, what else would you find on an old country road? Wildflowers, roadkill, the most popular truck in America. Oh, wait, we might be onto something with that last one. Ever since Ford announced that its F-150 Power Boost Hybrid would offer a 7.2 kilowatt onboard generator, we've wondered if it could charge an electric car. It'd be a boon to recovery companies if they could purchase an XLT with the generator to help stranded EVs alongside the road. Today, we're gonna to find out that answer. Not only will we attempt to charge a Tesla Model 3, we'll also find out if it's practical. Charging an EV with a pickup truck is worthless if you need to trickle charge the car with an engine running for 24 hours. So, if it can be done, we need to know how long it'll take to regain a reasonable amount of miles in the Tesla and how much gasoline we're burning in the process. We'll also answer the question, would it make more sense to use a standalone generator instead? We don't have an extensive science lab to perform precise fuel economy calculations, so this is how we're going to approach this experiment. First, we'll fill up the tank of the F-150 at the nearest gas station to our test site. We'll return to our quote-unquote stranded Model 3, plug it in, and start charging. Pulling as much amperage as the truck will safely allow, we'll attempt to recharge the car until it's regained 40% of its range. In this car, that's around 90 miles, which should be enough to drive the EV to another location to finish juicing up. Finally, we'll return to the gas station to refill the tank and find out how much fuel we burned. Before we get started, some background on this truck. Now in its 14th generation, the F-150 is available as a hybrid, which in Ford parlance is called Power Boost. It pairs a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with a 35 kilowatt electric motor and a 1.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. That combo results in a combined output of 430 horsepower and 570 pound feet of torque. Of course, what we're most interested in here is the Pro Power onboard generator which comes standard in the hybrid. By default, you get 2.4 kilowatts of peak output, but for only $750, you can upgrade to a massive 7.2 kilowatt generator. Ford knows some folks will use it for work. It can practically power an entire job site if necessary. Others will use it to go camping with. Yet others will use it for tailgating, hooking up a massive OLED flat screen to watch the big game in the parking lot. With that said, let's get started. If this works, we're gonna be here for a little while because at best, we're gonna get level two charging speeds and not the quicker DC fast charging rate. Here's our setup, which requires a few cables and adapters. We need the Tesla NEMA 1450 adapter in order to level two charge our Model 3 from the generator. Then we need an adapter to convert the generator plug to the NEMA 1450. This odd, roundy-shaped plug is a NEMA L14-30P specification. We'll go ahead and add links to all of these to our description below. You can obviously trickle charge your Tesla adapter-free using level one, but that slow speed violates our practicality goal. After you've gathered everything all together, um, you'll need your Tesla adapter. If you opened your trunk and realized you didn't have one, that's because Tesla's no longer shipping one with the car. Um, you're gonna have to order that separately. Not all EVs come with this type of cord with it. Um, and we like the idea of having it with you. So it might be worth having the extra money invested in one of these cords just to play it safe. Uh, the Tesla one will also require a separate adapter, which we talked about before. It's super easy to plug in, just snap it in until it clicks and you're all set. Um, the most difficult connector to connect is actually the adapter to convert to the generator. Um, it requires a little bit more effort than we care for with the one that we recommend, assuming I have Herculean strength. You take it over to the side of the truck, pop up the top panel, which is the one for the generator, and slide it right in, and you're all set. All we have to do is plug the adapter into the car, and then we can start the truck. So come over, give it a tap, plug it in. 
Our Tesla is already at 50% because we're not actually stranded alongside the road. This is movie magic we're talking about here, but we are going to charge it all the way up to 90%. That gives us a 40% range to play with in order to determine fuel economy, maximum charge rate, and all of that jazz as part of our experiment. Now, all we have to do is climb into the truck and get it started so that we can enable the ProPower onboard generator in its generator mode. The first thing that we'll have to do is to start the truck. Um, once you cycle the ignition on, a screen will pop up saying that there is something plugged into the outlet. Of course there is. We plug the Tesla into the generator. Um, we'll also see a data box that says that vehicle diagnostics is turned on. Hit close through that. And then it'll also remind us that in generator mode, the truck will probably run consistently. Because we're asking for six, seven kilowatts out of it, it's gonna need the gas motor to supply that power. Once we clear those dialog boxes out of the way, we just hit the Pro Power onboard display and we can watch it then pick up. The, the car already knows to ask for power, and since the generator is already running, as you can see, it's starting to power up. As we come around to the back of the truck, we're gonna see if the charge indicator light is on on the Tesla, which it is flashing green, which means everything is going okay. Right now, we're playing it sort of safe because we're charging at only 24 amps. That's still pretty speedy, actually, and electricians recommend that a breaker has 20% of headroom beyond the power of the charger. The F-150 here has a maximum output of 30 amps, according to Ford. 80% of 30 is 24, so we set the maximum amperage in the Tesla to that limit. That being said, everything seems to be going along just fine. So let's go ahead and up the amperage to 30, because hey, go big or go home, and actually, we do want to get home sooner. So in order to do that, we'll just open up the Tesla app and then we'll increase the amperage from 24 to 30. As the charge rate increases, you'll notice on the display that both generators will show 3,600 watts. That's combined for 7.2 kilowatts, which is the peak of the system. Now, while we're gonna be sitting here waiting for a little bit to charge, let's talk about some of the things that we really do like about the F-150 Platinum. This Platinum model certainly avoids crunchy granola vibes. Other than the Power Boost badges on the front doors, the hybrid truck doesn't advertise its electrified heart. It looks tough and capable, featuring an imposing front fascia reminiscent of the larger Super Duty. Headlights with LED accents that reach past the front bumper add to the truck's good looks. There's a generous helping of chrome exterior trim, including the grille, side mirror covers, and tailgate. Inside, there's no mistaking that this is a proper luxury truck. Real wood adorns the dash and door panels, and nearly every surface is padded or covered in soft-touch plastic. Being a crew cab, the F-150 has generous room for five passengers. Even with the panoramic sunroof, there's a lot of head and leg room, even for tall passengers. The leather upholstered front seats are softly cushioned, but we think they could use more side support. It's a little too easy to go sliding when taking a sharp turn. You get a lot of practical touches, too including an integrated fold-out table on the center console. Massive storage cubbies provide plenty of room for anything you want to keep handy for work or a road trip. In the back row, there's even more. The seats have cushions that flip up and folding seat backs that provide additional space for gear and equipment. The F-150 also gets SYNC 4. The interface is intuitive and logically laid out on a 12-inch touchscreen. The system supports wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also features a divided layout that allows you to jump between your device and the native system seamlessly. Suffice it to say, if you're gonna be sitting alongside the road charging for a couple hours with a friend, there's not many nicer places to be than inside the cab of an F-150 Platinum. Speaking of charging, we've been sitting here for a couple hours now, so let's see how things are going. The truck still has the generator peaked at maximum power and the fuel gauge has barely moved, but let's go check on the Tesla to see how far along it is. As you can see, everything is working all right back here. This time though, we're gonna check the Tesla itself to see how long we have left to wait and how the charging progress is going. Looks like everything's going well. We're at 75% and we'll be done here pretty soon. While we soak up a few more kilowatt hours, now's a good time to hit like on this video and subscribe to EV Pulse. On our channel, you'll see my first drive of the 2023 Toyota Prius sporting some sexy new curves. Is its newfound beauty more than skin deep? You'll have to watch to find out.
Of the two questions we asked at the beginning of this video, we can say that yes, you can recharge a stranded EV with the onboard generator from the Ford F-150. We've been monitoring the charging progress of our Tesla right here, and we're approaching 90%, which covers the 40% charging threshold that we set for this experiment. One of the surprises during this has been that while ProPower onboard might be rated for 7.2 kilowatts of peak power, it's also sustained power. Many standalone generators list sustained and peak output ratings. This Ford charged at peak for the entire duration of the test. That's hugely impressive. Despite the continuous output, the revs of the truck never exceeded 1,000 RPM. That means that the F-150, with the stock exhaust, is quiet. In fact, it's significantly quieter than running a portable generator. As we wrap up the test, we'll tally the numbers to answer the next big question. Is it practical? From a timing standpoint, a couple hours certainly seems reasonable, so it'll all come down to fuel consumption. Let's review. Our total charge time was two hours and 54 minutes. According to the Teslify app, average amperage was 30. That means it never dipped. Average voltage was 236, and it peaked at 270. Ultimately, a total of 19.7 kilowatt hours of electricity was added back to the battery. After topping off the fuel tank again, we ended up putting 3.133 gallons of fuel back into the truck. That puts our fuel consumption under generator usage at approximately 1.07 gallons per hour of runtime. That means with a 30.6 gallon fuel tank, which is what comes with the F-150 hybrid, you can run the generator for about 28.5 hours. 93.4 miles were added to the car, and in this testing scenario, 30 miles were added per gallon of gasoline consumed. Of course, this number is an estimate, and it can vary depending on ambient and battery pack temperatures, driving habits, and more. For comparison, the Honda generator with the most similar sustained output to what Ford can offer is only 5.5 kilowatts. It uses about a gallon per hour of operation. So while the F-150 burns a bit more fuel, it makes significantly more power. Numbers to numbers, that Honda generator carries an MSRP of 3,300. ProPower Onboard's 7.2 kilowatt configuration, remember, is only a $750 upgrade if you're already buying an F-150 hybrid. To state the obvious, yes, a standalone generator is way cheaper than a full-size pickup truck, but there are more uses for ProPower Onboard than just charging stranded EVs. You could use it to power a campsite, run a tailgate, or even power your power tools out on the job. Any of these reasons is good enough to consider this truck, but until we can carry around batteries as easy as we can carry around one of these, we're gonna need solutions like one of these. You can bet money if we were in the business of rescuing stranded EVs, we would have the F-150 hybrid in our fleets. Oh, and rest assured, it can charge members of its own family too. Next, watch our towing test of the all-electric F-150 Lightning. See what happens to the driving range when we throw our Model 3 on a trailer behind the truck. We think it might change your mind on whether an EV pickup could be right for you.